Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, The Bookworm here. Welcome back to another review. Today I'm going to be talking about The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is a book that I recently hauled uh, in a, a, well, recent haul video. If you feel like now which book reviews are about to come, check out this video. It will be linked down below in the description box. So The Bear and the Nightingale takes place in Russia. It's never actually said when, but I deduced it's a between the 14th and 15th century, that's at least what I think, and takes place in the Russian countryside and follows a family of rich farmers. And even though most people converted to the then new Christianity, some people still believed in the old ways. And our protagonist is Vasya, a girl who can see supernatural things. She has the sight to see the household demons and when she realizes that there are some dark forces out there that threatens her village and her family, she realizes that she's the only one who can help them. Now let's start generally. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was really great, really interesting. I read it fairly quickly. I always love reading about different cultures, whether they are fantastical or real, and it's even better when it's a combination between the two. I really like the fantasy aspect of this book. This is a pretty um, low fantasy, which means it takes place in our world as we know it and it has some fantastical elements to it. When I talk about the fantastical element, I don't only talk about the household demons that you need to leave the breadcrumbs if you want them to come up at night and clean the fireplace. I also mean the fantastic aspect of religion and how this connects to the notion of demons and other fantastical beings. Now, whenever there is a book that talks about different cultures, especially ones that really existed in the past, sometimes you can really tell when books are written uh, at those times and which books are written today. This is actually something that has been on my mind for a while, especially considering the book that I'm currently reading modern authors and this difficulty or sometimes inability to kind of separate today's moral standards and the way we view things today from the ways that people used to view things those times. Let's just say that I really loved what the author did this time where she did not impose today's standards on 15th century Russia. No one in this book thought it was wrong to marry very young girls to men, double their age that they never met, that their family chose for them. That's the way people behave then. I actually have a lot to say about this matter, but it it's not specifically related to this book because, as I said, in this book she was actually being really um, good about it. But if it's something that interests you, please write it down. Write down if you want to hear me talk about it because I am interested in maybe doing um, an entire video dedicated to this subject. So just let me know if that's something that might interest you. But let's go back to The Bear and the Nightingale without giving too much about the plot. I really love the writing, I really love the atmosphere, I really love the description. The book did send me to Wikipedia a few times to search a term or two and I really felt immersed in this other world. The author also sometimes would switch some words to Russian and it really added to the atmosphere. It didn't feel forced, it didn't feel weird. For example, many characters call the protagonist, who is a young woman, they call her Devuchka, which pretty much means girl in Russian. And I don't know, it really helped getting me into this atmosphere of being in a different time, different country and different culture. I thought it was really nice. As for flaws, I really don't have a lot to say. You know, no book is perfect, but there wasn't anything that I could really put my finger on that actually bothered me. However, after I finished this book and, you know, I started thinking about it and analyzing it, I realized that when you think about it, none of the characters have actually changed or learned something. Usually, especially the protagonist, but other characters, they they learn things, they change their perspective. But in this book, you 
really don't have it at all. The protagonist was proven right. The only change that actually occurs with her character is the fact that she matures with time. You know, we follow her pretty much from the moment she's born, but pretty much remains the same character. The nice people in the book remains nice throughout the book. The mean people remain mean. There was actually one character that I really wanted to change toward the end of the book, but that just did not happen. That was a little disappointing, although I can't really blame a book for not having the outcome that I would want, right? And lastly, I want to point out that there is a big theme here about Christianity or modern religion versus the old ways. And I do wonder how would devoted Christians refer to this book and what they would think, because Christianity is kind of the bad guy here. It's being presented as a religion of fear, which, let's face it, wasn't really different from what it used to be at those times. People would believe in those spirits, like wood spirits and household spirits, but then the priest would tell them that there are bad people and they will go to hell and their children will suffer and go to hell if they won't repent. And through fear, they will get them to the churches. And this is the way Christianity is presented here. I don't think this book will stir any sort of uh, controversy, you know, it's not, I don't know, the Da Vinci Code, but still I would like to know if you're a Christian, what do you think about the way Christianity and the people representing Christianity are uh, portrayed in this book? So to conclude, as I mentioned before, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was great. I loved the writing. I loved the descriptions. I loved the characters. I loved the way that she, through her language, really immersed me in this world that she created. If you're looking for a great book that's also interesting, has a great female protagonist, a bit of a reminiscence for old stories and folk tales without being too fantastical, then I highly recommend this book. Of course, uh, if you also love reading about different kind of cultures, this is also a great book. So that's it for my video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to click like if you indeed like this video to show your support. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you dare. Please write down below if you've read the book, what do you think? And also don't forget to write down your opinion about what I talked about earlier. Would you like to see a video of me talking about those problems that I mentioned about modern day authors who write books take place in the past but kind of force modern uh, worldview on the characters? So write down below what you think. Thank you again for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.